Hi everybody, welcome to Gunpla TV. Hey guys. Brought to you by Hobby Japan. This is episode 117. 117. 117, and uh, I see you've got up something pretty sizable there. Yeah, and right. actually, um, I think it was before the Shizuoka show, mm -hmm. we said I'd be doing this, and I got a lot of love. Yeah. A lot of people were really excited. Mm -hmm. And I got a lot to say, so uh, stay tuned. Yeah, uh, speaking of the Shizuoka Hobby show, what do you think? It was awesome. Yeah. A lot of nice one. Gundam Bandai stuff. Yeah. There was some very nice Macross. Yeah, yeah, the well. BF. One. Yeah, that was a good one too. And some Evangelion kits we mm -hmm. didn't know were coming. Uh, but uh, speaking of the Shizuoka Hava Show, some of the kits that we actually showed there are now in our little hands. Yes. So let's Can talk I actually them. say something? Oh yeah, yeah, go ahead. I like to call the Shizuoka the Shiz. Yeah, it was the Shiz. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, sorry, continue. Yeah. Yeah. We say the Shiz. But <laughs> <laughs> we took the shink to the Shiz. We took the shink on sen. We should clarify that. <laughs> to the Shiz. And it was the shiz. Yeah, anyway, fine. speaking of the shiz, here's yes. the DB Asabi. Sasabi. Sasabi. And uh, we don't really need to show it because yes, we saw we the saw show, but uh, this guy's got effect parts, as we mentioned. And now there's one thing on here that I didn't realize. Mm -hmm. Now, Gundam Front Tokyo is this huge exhibition going on in Odaiba. Mm -hmm. And they, outside the building, they have this 1 1 scale RX 782, mm -hmm. which we have shown on the show before. Yeah. But this exhibition now they have just started is the uh, Char's Counterattack. Okay. Which is where the Sasabi is from. And at the uh, Gundam from Tokyo, yeah. they have a one-tenth scale, I believe, one-tenth scale Sasabi. Really? It's, it's huge. And it's actually the Dome G Sasabi. And what they've done with the release of the BB Sasabi is they've actually given you markings for the Dome G, which you can put on your own BB Sasabi to coincide with the Gundam from Tokyo exhibition. Now, uh, at the show, oh, yes. I'll take that. Was this the guy who was opposite the BB behind you? Yes, that's yes. the one. Okay. That Hainu looks really Hainu good. looks really good. Yeah. And uh, speaking of other good kits, this is the uh, HG yes. Astray Blue Frame. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, I saw this at the show and I was quite surprised because, uh, well, because of it's a frame, right? We yeah. talk about HG, they don't have frames, you just use polycaps. But mm -hmm. the whole idea behind the Astray Blue Frames, Red mm -hmm. Frames, Green Frame, Gold Frames, is that there is actually a frame. The majority of this is a frame with some uh, armor around it. Mm -hmm. And uh, how are they going to create that? in an HG when they don't yes. make frames. Well, I want to actually just pop this open really quickly. Okay. I'll take a look at what they give you to do that. Okay, Gundam Astro Blue Frame 2nd L. Got lots of polycaps, of course. They're blue, similar to how they did the uh, MG. They had the, the colored polycaps. And then here's all the parts that are actually framed. You assemble it much like an HG, but there's more parts, right? You're not using just a polycap and a couple parts. You're actually going to have to assemble somewhat detailed frames. So there's actually quite a bit more when it comes to runners for this HG kit, which is pretty cool. And of course, this little stand that we can use for its weapon. And for this kit, with for some of the orange areas, you're gonna be using all these foils here. So it's actually got quite a few in there, which is pretty cool. I actually like to look at the Astrays. I'm more of a red frame guy, but uh, this HG version of the blue frame second looks pretty solid. All right, uh, Ryan. But that wasn't the big release from last week. No, following the Shizuko Hobby Show. This is the, the big one. Here is the Ale Strike Gundam. Very popular. Very popular. It's actually uh, RM for the remastered because okay. there is an MG Ale Strike that came out several years ago now. Mm -hmm. So I'm glad to see that they've done a new one. And I'm going to pop this box open and show everybody just what comes with the new Master Grade Ale Strike RM. All right, here's what you get inside the Ale Strike box. Well, you get a, a fully pre assembled. Pre assembled. Wow. Well, that's great. Ale <laughs> but that's not all. <laughs> Look. You get, the, you get the striker pack, I get already built, look at that. <laughs> but that's not it, Ryan. Like, you this is a big box, you get more stuff, like this plastic bag, look. All, all these, all these weapons. fully assembled <laughs> weapons. Was yeah. it fun, Sid? It was awesome, I had a good time. I'm uh, actually going to talk about it in a little bit more detail right now. So, uh, let me get set up here. Yes, uh, Ryan, I did take uh, the weekend to assemble this guy. I'm glad I did, I gotta say, this is a... Very, very solid mm. Master Grade kit, and uh, I'm actually quite impressed with it. It's very similar to, of course, what we've seen before with the Blitz, the uh, Dual Gundam Assault, and the Buster. But uh, the Strike, I mean, it's it's an icon from that, that area. And to get a new Master Grade kit and some new design here, here's the, the Ale Strike pack. You can see it actually uh, sorry, slides, the connection slides to allow you to reposition it, right? Mm -hmm. So, putting this back in here. Let's put this guy on his back. Now, we, can, we know this, this frame has some good articulation, although there is some uh, issue 
with the side skirts. Just have the design of the side skirts. It's actually pretty cool because you can get this bend, but this stays in the same position. But if you tend to push this way, it might pop off. So mm -hmm. I'm going to try and be careful when I put this backpack on because you have to handle it a certain way. So I would plug it right in the back here. There he is. I'll leave him like that. Well, that now, seemed pretty seamless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just plugged it. <laughs> I just plugged it in. Now, you can, this is obviously a pretty sizable backpack. And when mm -hmm. we showed uh, the real grade version of this kit, uh, we, we had to show that it had problems standing up because of all that weight at the back and that the way the frame is designed on the real grade, it wasn't able to really hold it up. So how does the, uh, how does the new MG RM AL Strike handle this thing? Well, I gotta say it's pretty solid. Yeah, yeah. No, it stands I can, up. I can stand it up, I can reposition these kind of wings up and down. And for the most part, he's standing really, really well. I haven't yet encountered an issue with him falling backwards. Which is good, don't you? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think so. I was really worried. <laughs> like, I was like, okay, I built this thing. It looks awesome. I'm going to put it together. It's going to fall. I know it. I know it's going to yeah, happen. It's... My dual gun kind of still is a little shaky with the, all its armor on. But, you know, this sail strike, the only, you know, thing I've encountered that kind of, I would say, is a concern is this, the side skirts. Mm -hmm. Other than that, it's, it's such a solid kit here. And now, if that wasn't enough, of course, you get all the... Uh, all the weapons. weapons. Two beam sabers. Here's the beam saber handles. I'm not going to take them off because I think they look cooler there. You also get the shield. And the shield mounts the same way we've seen many other Gundam's shields mount. This just plugs into the back of the arm. You also get uh, the rifle here, which actually isn't as intricate as the, even the real great one, mm -hmm. but it's still good enough. You'll get the extra hands you need to uh, grip it. And you also get the armor schneiders. Armor schneiders? Armor schneiders. What is the Schneider? The Schneider is German for, what's that? Somebody schooled me on that in a previous episode Schneider. of TV. But yeah, these called Cutter. Cutter. You're the German guy now. Yeah, Schneider. But it sounds like a surname, like Schneider. Well, yeah, there are surnames, Schneiders. Schneiders. Now, this is meant to, uh, this is meant to open up so you can stick your Schneider in there. Just stick it in there. But this actually illustrates just the connection used on this design. Yeah. There's just these two kind of little round pegs that are supposed to clip into these hollows here, which allow it to open. And I'm actually coming back to this because I know a lot of people are going to encounter this issue and they might be surprised, like, what the hell is going on? But because uh, Bandai still wants this to be pretty articulate in the lower half of its body, they had to try and find a way to get these side skirts to move out of the way. And it works all right. I can't really complain about it. But probably the best thing about this kit, Ryan, drum roll. <laughs> Look at this thing. Whoa. <laughs> they, they give you a stand. I'm actually going to put this part down here. They give you a stand. Yeah, it's in the box. The instruction mm. manual tells you how to put it together. Now, you can plug, uh, put him onto his footrests here. He's, he's getting ready for launch. This will, this cable here. Oh, so he's got a plug to plug in. He can plug in. Yeah. Right like that. I like it because the, even this uh, cable here, it's uh, solid enough that it can hold him in a variety of positions. Like if I'm getting ready to launch my strike into space, maybe he's going to assume in a position which oh. is like really far yeah, forward. Yeah. But this uh, little cable here will hold him and it also moves here. So if I were to, to uh, pull this forward as if he's launching more towards the front here, this will come out as well because I've got more than enough length. Oh, so it extends, okay, yeah. wow. It also plugs in the back here. There's these two grooves. Yeah where you can actually insert the cable to like hold it there so it won't move past there. So he's a hybrid. <laughs> Electric. But, you know, I'm gonna unplug the, uh, the cable here, put it back and get out the actual stand and attachment here. Now this is meant to plug into the same spot. You see this little hollow here. There's a poly cap inside there. We'll plug this into the back. Go, go. And there he is. We will uh, go, go, ale strike. Go, go, gadget. Go, go, ale strike. I'll move this down a little bit here. Maybe that's a little better. So there he is, Ryan. Oh. Ale strike's ready for launch. A lot of people will be getting their boxes around this time and will be starting to assemble their ale strike. And I'm looking forward to seeing what they do with it. Yeah, because post there's a it lot on a lot of, of pose potential. Yeah, with this kit, there's going to be a lot of really great photos coming of this guy. 
Do you think this is a trend, like including nice bases? No, or? I don't actually. I think this isn't. I think uh, they did this because the original Air Strike, I believe, might have come with a launcher. I mean, the oh, ZX, okay. I think, comes with one as well. Okay. And uh, simply because uh, they probably wanted to add a little extra mm -hmm. because you, we just saw at the hobby show the Master Ray 3.0 yeah. of the ARC 782. And they announced that at the same time they released a new master grade of the Ale Strike. And I, some people were questioning why they didn't redo this Ale Strike. I mean, the original master grade came out years ago. They're making a new one. Why didn't they do to the Ale Strike RM what they did to the 3.0 RX782? Mm. But Bandai instead went to, with the same frame they used for their other seed kits. So maybe they thought that they had to throw in this kind of okay. little thing, give people a little extra, a little buying incentive, because it's not maybe too much different from the mm. original Ale. But uh, it's a really solid kit all the way around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it stands perfectly without the base. The new seed MGs mm -hmm. from the last year, you know, we have the uh, the Aegis, the Buster, the Blitz, and uh, the Dual Gundam. They're all really solid kits. So, I'm, you know, I'm not surprised that Bandai went with this idea of the same frame. It worked out really well. But uh, what does that leave left for seed? Are they going to do a remasters of other kits? Or are they going to put out some new MGs? I don't know, because I haven't heard anything. But until I hear something, I'm just going to play around with this guy. So there you have it, Ryan. Ikimasu! That what do you think? base. Yeah, it's actually... It's actually, it's a very it's, it's good looking awesome. kit. You know when you buy normal Master Grade kits, if you want to get it to stand and pose, well, you buy a separate mm. action base and they have a variety to choose from. But to actually throw this in with the kit to allow you to actually use the nice. Ale Strike to its potential kind of thing. It's like it's a diorama. Awesome. It's awesome. You can make your little own diorama with this. What's, get one of those mechanical bases. And what's the retail actually on this? Uh, well, Bandai's got the price is only forty two hundred yen. Really so what's good. our price? Like thirty six something. And in US, forty two dollars. Yeah, that's nothing. Yeah, that's nothing, right? So I'm gonna put my awesome aside here, and I'm gonna show my awesome. All right. On my awesome leg. Okay. So Sid. Yeah. You know, thanks to your input in helping mm -hmm. me choose this kit. Yes. A lot of people are excited about me doing it, and I must say, from the amount I've done, it's, it's actually a pleasure. Yeah. This kid was made in 2003. I know. Can you believe that already? It's 10 uh, years old. You know, the fit is perfect. Yeah. It's amazing. Like, I mean, if the PGs now are better, I'm like, I don't know how they could have gotten better. <laughs> Seriously. But I'll talk about what I've done so far. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, I put the foot together. Yeah. And the thing that kind of just amazes me about the foot is just... You get all this movement in there, yeah. as well as all of this, which is just nuts. Yeah. And you know what I like is they incorporate like that that uh, metal piece, that yeah. silver piece for the pistons. So as you're moving it around, it looks like a machine. Oh, absolutely! Yeah. Yeah, you can see all the you can see the pistons in here. Yeah. It's uh, and how they. I mean, there's a few. Yeah. So it's. Absolutely amazing, and also I quite like when you actually have the foot on. You actually have that little red with the metallic oh, that's cool. behind. That's cool. So yeah, it looks. Absolutely awesome, and I mean, just the uh, this is the main leg here. Yeah. Just the articulation. Yep. It's just crazy. And it's nice and stiff, right? Yeah. It yeah. feels solid, and what I particularly like is the piping here. Yeah. And you can't see it, but there's actually a spring underneath here, so you get a little bit of okay. give. So yeah, I mean, just putting this together, and it's actually been really seamless. I mean, there's a few screws you need mm -hmm. to put in. Yeah. And actually, I must say the guide, if you can see this okay, yeah. is just so well detailed. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly like every section you do, you have the the runner list. The runner list. And yeah. a lot of guides don't actually do that. You need the runner list because there's so many runners when it comes to a kit like this that it's a good idea to have exactly what you need mm -hmm. before you start on a section. You know, you can get away with an HG and an MG just having one box with a pile of runners, but with the perfect grade, you kind of need to set everything up beforehand. Yeah, and I mean, it's, a, it's such a help. And every section has this. So, you know, you're not flipping to the beginning of the manual to yeah. see which runners you need. You always know exactly where you are. Yeah. And the other thing I particularly like is that it'll say to you, like, build four of these. Yeah. But even though you're working on the one leg, it's kind of preparing you for the next bit. Yeah. Which uh, some kits just get you to do every single section individually. Mm -hmm. And you kind of know, oh, I might have to double this later, but you don't do it just in case. Yeah. But Bandai is really good in pointing it out yeah but uh, let me quickly put this uh, leg together um, so you just pop this guy in here uh, get these in there sorry I haven't put his foot cover on here and also uh, I guess this is the what would you call this <laughs> what's the back of your leg called Sid 
That's called my what? Calf? Calf? Calf ear and that just like clips on. No, this is a different design that you'll find from other yeah. uh, art, uh, PGs and yeah. Gundam kits in general that the whole unit will slide on from the back. And my thinking is that it might be meant to change when it comes to change into the full burner mode or whatever. That's but a good because point. you have not got to that part of the, the manual yet or the build, mm. you're going to have to let us know in the future if that has any, anything to do with it. I will. And check out that. That's crazy. Look at that articulation. <laughs> and you can't see it actually, but there's actually pistons also in the foot here. Yeah. Which are even hidden away. I mean, they didn't need to do that, but they did. Yeah. So yeah, I must say like, this is pretty freaking cool. Welcome to the land of PG, right? <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, I'm so excited to actually get this guy like yeah. fully built and actually play with him. It looks like the articulation is just out of this world. Yeah. Well, um, good. let's uh, head on to the competition, I think. Sure. Okay, Ryan, it's also a big day today. Yes, uh, the SD Gundam competition is that, that? Mm -hmm. we've been, it's been two months? It's been a yeah, while. Kinda, yeah, kind of. We announced it secretly at the end of an episode to win some posters. Yep. And uh, we've gone ahead and chosen the winners. We do, we have chosen the winners randomly. Four winners have been chosen. Yes. So uh, I'm just going to show the picture, read the name. Yes. We'll talk about their SD and then you'll contact them yes. for their prizes. All right, the first one, this is, uh, how did I write his name here? Aaron DK. Or DK. I like this one. <laughs> I also like it too. It's, uh, it's, got, it's got charm. It does. I, I enjoy the pink. You don't see that color yeah, very yeah, often no, no. And I love on the, any Gundam whatsoever. The pose. It's very ladylike. Yep. yep. Okay. So congratulations, Aaron. Now the next one is Ong Dai. I hope I pronounced that right. You can see this is the, um, the SD version of yes. the uh, Strike Noir. Yeah. And I gotta say, I think the SD version of the Strike Noir in many aspects is better than the Master Grade version. I just love that head on this thing. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of people actually build this kit. It's quite a dynamic a lot of, photo. They gravitate towards it for some <laughs> reason, maybe because it's got those big wings on its back. Yeah. So it doesn't look as grossly out of proportion because the backpack is mm -hmm. so big. I don't know. I really like this kit as well. That's a cool pose. That's a good picture. Yeah, we'll Very good picture. Next one's Johnny Chan, and he's got the, t the Titus. The Titus? The Titus? Yeah, I like Which the... Kind of punch. <laughs> yeah. With the, the fixed. Like Hyukshin style punch there. Yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Yeah, no, that's what cool. happened to your desk there? Did you like yeah, bang your head or something? Troll rage. <laughs> <laughs> Someone on the internet's wrong. <laughs> All right. And uh, Elias Archuleta. Archuleta? <laughs> okay, you know, I'm glad oh, this one was chosen actually. Pony. Because I, I've got to ask. I think this is the uh, Stargazer on top of mm -hmm. the pony. Now, we don't live in Japan, so we're not a part of this phenomenon, but we are aware of it because we know the internet. Well, we had the My Little Pony stock for like a really short time and yeah, it sold out sold so them. quickly and we were like, why did it sell out no. so quick? I know My Little Pony because my sister was collecting them when we were both like 10 yeah, years old. My Little Pony. And, and for some reason, they're all the rage again amongst guys my age. And I can't right. figure this out. Your age? Yes, like full grown adult males ranging from like, you know, 18 all the way to like wherever my age ancient and they're all raving about this there's a new ca cartoon or something i don't know so someone yeah explain anyone please explain to me why this is so popular i don't know i am at lost there's something on the internet i don't understand i don't, I don't know. know it's the internet mate but yeah explain explain yourself <laughs> Actually, the guy if there's who... any bronies out there, that's what they're called, Ryan. Bronies. Oh, yeah, about if that. there's any bronies out there who wish to come forward and, and tell me, school me, Elias? teach me, Elias, Archuleta, maybe. If Elias, wanna, if you want to come, come on, forward mate. and help me out, first I'd of all, it. is that your pony or is that your sister's pony? If it is your pony, explain yourself. Go brony. I, I more power to you. Yeah. All right, now we've got questions. We do. But do we have? Uh, there's something I want to sh show oh. from a question that we had. Several weeks ago. Okay. And that was involving the hands uh, that we uh, have for the yes, Shinanji yes, Stein. Yes, and the, yes, yes. I'll explain that while I talk about them because I got them right here. Okay. Okay, so we had a question a couple weeks ago regarding the uh, hands for the Shinanji Stein kit. These are the same as the new MG Jesta and also the new Gundam version Ka. And they're similar to the Perfect Grade and RG hands in that they come molded on one runner, you cut them out, and you can position them and start bending them. But a lot of people are experiencing issues with a break or uh, they pop them off and they lose the center part and they can never get them back on again. So the question was, is there a replacement we can use instead of these hands if we have a problem with these ones? Well, I've taken out the uh, mechanical hands that we have here, the yellow submarine hobby-based mechanical hands, and I've actually assembled one here. 
and I've just gone ahead for the purpose of this video and assembled one as a as a fist. Easy enough. And this is the all I need here. This little ball joint. Ooh, come, come on back here. So all I need to find out to see if this works is if I can plug in this ball joint into the Shenandoah Steins cuff here. And I, this is the Shenandoah Steins cuff. And I just take a mo moment to push this in here. Come on, clunk. There it goes. And it, it went in, no problem. So all I can do is just plug that back onto the arm of the uh, Shenandoah Stein and I've got myself the hands. Now, this one comes with these free posed hands and you can see that when I'm bending it, it tends to rub against this uh, connection for the thumb and that's why it's kind of popping off here. But you can uh, build these hands as well, which feature, I'll get you to zoom in here really close. They feature uh, individual fingers. So you can build these hands to uh, move just like the uh, Shenandoah Stein MP hands. And while I was doing this, I thought, well, if it works on the uh, Stein, will it work on the, the normal Shenandoah? So here's the cup for the normal Shenandoah. Well, let's, let's give this a try. We'll plug this in here. Maybe this way. There we go. And as you can see, that peg went in. No problem. So if you are experiencing difficulty with your Shinanju Stein hands, there it is, or even your Shinanju version Ka hands, these uh, mechanical hands from the hobby base should work fine because all you need to do is just plug this baby into the hole and you're good to go. So you we'll can... have a link for this up. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I'll throw these up there. There's okay. actually uh, different kinds, different colors and also size for like MG, HG. They uh, tend to work pretty well for uh, all the Gundam model kits. So, so I hope that answers uh, those questions. We're yeah. going to talk about the hands and now we can get on to the current questions. What do you got for me, Ryan? Okay, these are from uh, YouTube. Okay. This one here. That's uh, Purex. See, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Purex Oxynage? I think that's supposed to be like Onage. Onage, <laughs> maybe. Purex Onage? Two Y's instead of a W, or two yeah. V's instead of a W. YouTube names. Are they going to make a Zaku 3.0? I don't see how they could make the kit better than it already is. Mm. One of my all-time favorites. Yes, the 2.0 Zaku is awesome. I think so too. However, I think we will probably see a 3.0 version. Mm. If they start uh, changing the color, you know, it's got a different mm. kind of tone, armor tones. They might do something different with the uh, armor collars you find. And uh, they'll probably make it so it takes an LED, you know, yeah. there's uh, there's room there for improvement. Of Actually, course. there's been a lot of chatter about just 3.0 in general. I don't yeah. think we covered it because we were at the show or we looked at the 3.0. We saw the 3.0, yeah. yeah. It's actually a lot of buzz slash controversy about the 3.0. Yeah. And as it nears the release date in August, we're going to be talking about it more and more. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> uh, Rogue SW, OMG, a Bandai transformable Valkyrie. How is the detailing compared to the Hasagawa offerings? Mm -hmm. Keep up the good works Sid and Ryan. Uh, what do you think of the, uh, the... I think it looked awesome. I think it looked awesome. I think we've got to test it because the transformation on some of the House Sagawa kits is particularly troublesome. Well, the, old, the other, even the Bandai Macross mm. kits that they have now can be pretty yeah. difficult. But uh, I think it's tough to talk about the detailing when we talk about the design because it's mm. the first Valkyrie and there's not a lot of like details that you see in the the ones that come after, but it looks really it good. It looks spectacular. And if yeah. if the transformation is straightforward, it's going to be a winner. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We're definitely going to break that out when it comes in. And I think Valkyries it. always look good. Yeah, it's the transformation that. Yeah. Makes I usually it tend to here, try right? to keep them in the Jerwalk mode, which I think yeah. is the coolest yeah, mode of them all. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Next. Jerwalk. Badass mother 006. <laughs> Well, there's so much to look forward to. However, yeah. I have to ask now, does Kotobuki not attend this or these shows? No. The uh, yeah, we didn't see them, did we? They I normally show up at Tokyo. Yeah, they? they're the Tokyo show. But Shizuoka it seems to be, as Tokyo expands, Shizuoka seems to be getting yeah. smaller and smaller. Yeah. It looks like it's Bandai and Tamiya. Like Mostly they Hasegawa. control it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's some uh, manufacturers that don't make it there. Decided yeah. just to put the resources into the Tokyo show. Yeah. So. yeah. Also, like, um, Shizuoka is where Tamiya has their big factory. So it is yeah, kind yeah. of a Tamiya event. Yeah, yeah well... I think what they could refer to uh, Shizuoka is kind of like the model, model of Japan, the model capital of Japan, because you have, I think Aoshima, Hasegawa, Fujimi, Bandai, Timi are all in Shizuoka. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas Kotobuki, I think, is a Tokyo company. Uh, I can't yeah. remember. Next, Zach Miller. 
Mm -hmm. Is the RG GPO one going to come with the parts for the full burner? Well, there's actually two GPO ones. So one's going to be the Safratis and one's going to be the full burning version. Mm -hmm. So it's not, they're not going to come with parts for the other one. There's going to be no part swapping. Okay. You're, going to, you're going to build one or you're going to build the other. Mm. Now, this is from Black Sheep One. Okay. Um, he's asking us to pass a message to Bandai to oh, actually oh, do their the instructions <laughs> in English. Um, but it's, he kind of ends here. You guys on the show present a lot of cool stuff, but at least to me it's useless because I can't read Japanese. i got to say mm. something to you, mate. Like, I came to Japan with zero Japanese and it hasn't improved much. But with the manuals, yeah. you don't need Japanese at all. I think what Band, at the end of the day, what Bandai looks at is just numbers, and they're already selling a huge yeah, amount. But uh, well, that's the thing. They're already selling a huge amount of models. But what I'm All saying world, is whether Bandai, if it was, I in, don't think it could be in need. any other language. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't need to be. Well, that's part of it. Like, if people yeah. can understand diagram, they don't need language. Yeah. But just the sheer quantity they sell seems to show that people are not struggling to read these manuals. No, no, absolutely. Okay, yeah, yeah absolutely. So. And uh, actually, from the PG Bandai's manuals are yeah. incredibly good. I, I mean, I could get the feeling that, like, there is Japanese text in the manual, and yeah. maybe you feel that you're missing out on something, but. Yeah. You know, <laughs> you'll still build a kit. You know. yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can, I can see in sometimes with say the version com manuals, yeah. which have pages of just texts talking about the design, and, like that's pretty unique to that those mm. kind of kits. And maybe we are missing something from not being able to understand mm. that. But if Bandai put it out in English, would that mean that they have to do a French and a Spanish as well? Well, that's the would thing. They have to do Portuguese. We sell a lot of Gundam to like Indonesia, yeah. Philippines, to yeah. a lot of non-English speaking countries, yeah. and yeah, it might get expensive. Yeah. But shall we continue? Let's do it. Uh, Jinta, Jintat87, Dear Ryan, I think he means Dear Sid, when will RG release an other villain character besides Zack? Good question. And I think because the RG line is so young still, mm -hmm. or we only have 11, 13 if you count the two coming up, yeah. that uh, they still got to focus on the, uh, the hero suits that they know yeah. are going to sell before they start trying to look at a, a villain suit. And of course they had to put a Zaku in there because yeah. it's the original bad guy. But uh, that's going to be a while before we see a villain suit of any kind. Mm -hmm. Next is Unless Ahmed Yassin. Rip, uh, Rip Ryan. You Rest will in peace, Ryan. You will never finish this one, just like the Falcon. I didn't reply to him and I said, I'm going to finish this, mate. Yeah. It'll take a while, maybe the rest of my life, but about. it'll get done. If you don't paint it, just... Put it together. Yeah, if done. I put it together, it'll be done. I think yeah. when I start trying to get fancy, things get a uh, paint always slows everything down. Yeah. <laughs> Next is from Al. Okay. Um, thanks for another great episode. Ryan did a fantastic job on the destroyed phalanx. Mm -hmm. And actually, thanks very much, Al. And a few other people said that thanks very much. It was fun. Yeah, it was fun. Um, it looks so realistic. <laughs> <laughs> My Man, camera looks so good. realistic. <laughs> give me a hug. Give me a hug. You are much better modeler than you think you are. Well, thank you. So although your PG will be a challenge, I'm sure you can handle it and have lots of fun building the kit. Mm -hmm. Actually, I have a hockey question for Sid. All right. It is I'm tough ready. to watch. Is it tough to watch hockey in Japan? And for the second year in a row, my Canucks got kicked out of the playoffs in the first round. What's your take on this? Is it time to rebuild? All right. It's not difficult to watch hockey in Japan because the internet streams these games. Yeah, yeah. And actually, I'm at work when they're happening, so I can kind of have them on the corner of my screen. Don't say that. And... Uh, uh, the boss actually walked by me when I was, <laughs> I was watching one, but I was already doing work, so it's okay. And uh, I actually watched uh, these playoffs games when the, the Canucks got bounced in the first round with a sweep. And, uh, you know, people are like, oh, people in Vancouver, which is where I'm from, they're like, oh, this team's crap, everybody's fired, let's just rebuild. But when you, you have to look at their track record over the last, mm -hmm. like, say, six years, that's a good time frame. And they finished at the top of their division or one, you know, top of the league for like five of the last six years. Like, that team is solid. And it, it's tough to win 16 games to win the, the championship, but the fact that you can get in there and make it to that that point is pretty good. I mean, there's 30 teams in the league, only 16 get to play for the okay. the cup, and Vancouver was in there each time. Like, they were one game away from winning it all. Sid loves hockey. I do, I'll cry if I start talking anymore. Sid needs his own video class for hockey. Yeah. That's right, Those, I'll have my own <laughs> YouTube channel. <laughs> hockey from Japan. <laughs> we'll talk uh, about the Nico Ice Bucks. <laughs> <laughs> Next is, I think this is from uh, Hobby Link TV. Okay. Um, Benton6572, good day to you, gents. I was given the Mega Size RX78 <laughs> for my birthday. And, and the box you're is right, like, it is big. big. <laughs> Finally, a question about Happy Mega birthday. Size. Here's this box. It's big. Oh my God, it's a car. <laughs> but it was 
But I was wondering if you have any idea if Bandai will release any more Mega Size Gundams or was it an exercise in what they can do? Also, great channel as always, and a small idea on a future show. So it's histories. Good luck with the Gundam rolling wine. Hope you do well. We have a few. We have a few Mega Sizes, but any new ones on the horizon? I haven't heard anything. No. I, I kind of can understand why because when you think I of don't when you why. think of what every everything Bandai can do, like look at how an RG looks and it's this small. Look what they're doing with the 3.0 of the RX-72. It looks amazing. Look at what Bandai can do. And then in that lineup of fantastically detailed articulated kits, you have this big block of plastic known in the mega size, which Dude, is- there's th a specific kind of guy yeah. and you're staring at him. People who just like something this big, but they have PG for that. Yeah, but PG costs how much more than a yeah, mega size? Yeah, but I would rather save my money and get a PG okay, than well, four mega size kits different. that just There are don't. people who like mega size, and people likes it. I think and that the <laughs> market has spoken somewhat. Well, this is my, my thought anyway, judging from how many I see sitting on the shelves at the Toys R Us, they, they won't seem to go anywhere. But uh, people would rather build something more intricate than something larger. Well, the thing I, I think is great about Mega Size, and I can understand people who do like Mega Size, if you'd like to get detailing done. Yeah. Like, it's a canvas. Yeah. I think Mega Size is the best canvas. It's better than a PG because with a PG, after you've spent 200 bucks, you yeah. probably don't want to mess with it too much, but with a mega size, you can do something incredible. And but I think that, in some ways, sends mixed messages. Like because when they were marketing the the mega size, they made this big point of saying you don't need tools. You it don't. comes with this little thing. You just pop it off the runner. Anybody can assemble it. And kids, well, if kids are assembling it, they're not going to be using it as a canvas, except for maybe with the crayons. So I I think that they just missed don't something knock somewhere. mega size that's what i'm saying there's just people out there who love it like me yeah who will continue to push for it and call bandai and say to you yeah. what the hell guys get well you're calling bandai. Bandai. why are you asking for english instruction manual no because this makes more <laughs> sense than english Damn all it. right okay okay anyway before we let's take this before we get this, uh, rage quit um <laughs> i'd like to just promote our facebook pages yeah. and our mm -hmm. hobby tv blog and all the other good stuff we're doing. Yep. And we're going to be launching our new hobby link yes. site very soon. It's in testing as we in speak. In testing. In beta testing. Yeah. Not alpha, beta. And then yeah. it will stay in beta forever. Yeah. But uh, any, I don't have actually anything else to add. Do you have any uh, Just to say that uh, in the next few episodes, we're of course going to start seeing those things that were shown at the hobby show. Mm -hmm. So we ha kind of have an idea of what's going to be coming mm -hmm. and what you can see in the show. And then as, when we see the new releases, of course, we'll bring those up too. So keep writing your questions, let us know what you want to see. And, uh, and tell us about My Little Pony. And please tell us, bronies out there, what it is. Convince me. Convince, Convince it. Me. It's going to be tough though. I want a mega sized pony. See, maybe that's what they need to get to. It's a big <laughs> mega size, doesn't articulate giant pony. My With Little Pony anime. doesn't articulate. I know. That's your thing. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. See you later. Yeah.